Hello, my friends. I'm so excited. Look, we're getting so close to being in person. And uh, and first of all, I trust you had a wonderful new year. Um, as you can see, it's still kind of Christmas in this house. And I'm sure you'll forgive me. It's all good. Um, and yet I'm excited to be with you guys today. I can't wait to be with you in person. And, and we're going to talk today. We're going to switch gears a little bit. Um, you know, we talked about some of these just mindset based things. We talked about um, we talked about being intentional. We talked about accountability. We started talking about commitment and being a committed person and having that attitude of just absolutely no excuses. So we've talked about all those things and they're great. Now, if we're gonna if we're gonna be accountable and we're gonna be intentional and we're going to be accountable, uh, a lot of that is gonna come down to time blocking. And what we're not going to do today is talk about the basics of time blocking. We will talk about that, just not right now. Because what I have found over the last few years of coaching and goodness, over an entire career for myself, is that the, the challenge is not often like how to time block. Like, I think we all know how to function with a calendar on some level. I don't think that's the challenge. There, there, there's a pitfall that a lot of agents, that most agents honestly fall into, even some of the highly successful ones, which is why there's so many people that maybe you're closing 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 100 million. And, and the truth is you could probably double that just by making this one change or at least being aware of this uh, thing to avoid. And, and that's, I, it could be called different things. I'm weird and I call it Pop-Tart agent, right? That Or, or, or star agent. So you're probably already like, what is he talking about? He, he had too much fun on New Year's. No, I didn't, right? So well, I did, and yet I didn't, right? So a Pop-Tart agent, and you all know them, and some of you probably are them, and that's okay. That's why you're here. You're here because you're looking for more in your business and your life. And, and the reality is if you're looking for more, the road is paved with different, right? Like if we're looking for something we don't already have, we get to behave differently and act differently and think differently and do differently, right? So here's what a pop tart agent is or a star agent is, right? Oh, um, oh, oh, you want to see that house? Okay. Oh gosh, I have. I'm supposed to be lead generating, and I've got that. Oh no, no, no it's fine. I'll go show you the house. It's fine. Oh, you can. Oh yeah, no, no, we'll do it right now. We'll do it right now. Oh, in. Oh gosh. Oh, they're calling up with that appraisal. I'm. Not, oh, I'm in the middle of lead gen. I better take that call. Oh yeah, no, 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 like pop tart agents are completely controlled by this thing. Pop-Tart agents are told what to do rather than following the schedule that they should. Star agent, it's all the same thing. The, the star agent here, I'll give you a visual just so you can laugh at my awful visual skills. It's, well, you're here and you're here and then you're over here and you're here and then you're here. And, and there's no organization to your day. You have a set organization to your day. You just never stick to it because you're too busy getting distracted. You're putting out fires, which makes me crazy when I hear real estate agents say that because none of you are firefighters. Or maybe you are, I do know a real estate agent, a great one in my town that's a firefighter as well. And yet not in your business, you're not, that's not what you do, right? So are you letting yourself be controlled by your phone, by your computer, by your clients? Or are you treating yourself like a business owner? Are you treating your business like a business? You know, and, and you don't need to give me flack. I'm going to call myself out. I am not comparing what we do as real estate agents to what a doctor does or what a lawyer does. I'm not. I'm not. And at the same time, they're both professional professions. All, all three of those professions can get paid on the same level, right? And yet you don't call your doctor and say, hey, I need to see you in 10 minutes, so I'll be right there. Uh, you don't call your lawyer and say, hey, I've got an issue. I need you to talk right now. You, that that's not how they function. That's not how you would expect them to function. And yet we let ourselves be totally run by other people, places, and things. And you don't have to. Probably one of the biggest pivotal moments in my life, I can't even just say for my career because it's so much more than that, was, oh God, it would have been probably about five years ago now that we were going on a vacation and I traditionally had not been great at unplugging or being present. And um, and it was a vacation, it was international. And I was like, nope, I'm just doing it. And, and I shut my phone off. Well, I really liked it. 
And so when I came back, I decided, you know what, I don't feel like I really need notifications for everything. And so I started to take things away. I started to take some of the pop-ups away. And then eventually I took away all sound and vibrations, right? So so I got to a point where my phone, and, and, and you'll be involved with me, you'll see, it, it does not vibrate because and we all know like oh well, how would i know well, you know how loud a vibrate is on a phone especially a modern phone right it doesn't vibrate it doesn't ring i don't do that i check my phone when i choose to and don't get me wrong it's still fairly often i'm just not controlled by it so, so the first thing is understanding that like you don't have to be completely run by this like it's okay it, it, it it's okay so, so there's one tip it's like maybe you don't need every notification in the world to be on your phone. Maybe you maybe you only need some of them. Maybe you only need certain types of notifications. Like, like some of my stuff still pops up, it just doesn't vibrate. So if I'm looking, I'll see it. And yet if I'm over here and I'm doing something different, it's not going to distract me. Simple stuff, right? Super, super simple. And yet it's foundational. Because if some of you are like, oh yeah, I do kind of fall into that category, you're probably pretty stressed out. You're, you're, you're probably not hitting the goals that you desire to because you can't stay focused long enough in order to do it. So that's the first thing, like how, how much of this needs to run your life and, and what could you change? And knowing that you don't have to go cold turkey to like, I accept no calls, like where could you start? All right, so, so, so that's one thing. Now, now the next thing is, and this was this is so simple. I, I had to learn that if I was going to stick to my calendar and to my time block and, and to the way that I desired to live my life, that that everything was an appointment. Everything. So so if you're used to saying, oh yeah, I guess no, I can meet then it's fine. I just won't go to my kids' soccer game. No, no, no. You you didn't have your kids' soccer game. You had an appointment. That's all the client or the other agent or whoever needs to know in your life. I have an appointment then. I could meet though at this date and this time or this date and this time, which one's better? So so whether it's an actual business appointment, like a listing appointment or a showing, or for the record, your lead generation, you know, that stuff that gets you paid, that should be an appointment. You know, I can't tell you how often I have people say they can't come to a bold or they're gonna be late to a bold because they have this buyer or the seller that could only meet in the morning. And I ask questions, it's what a coach does. Okay, well, I, I get it. L let me ask you though, are they, they told you they could only meet in the morning or did they just ask if you could meet in the morning? Well, they asked if I could meet in the morning. Okay, well, did you ask if, did you tell them you had an appointment and ask if this time or this time was available? Well, no, I didn't do that, right? So, so we're just jumping at opportunities thinking that they're so, so fragile that they're going to disappear. And that's not really the case. We teach people how to treat us. No, you know what? I've got an appointment at that time. So I don't care if the appointment is a business appointment or it's a lead generation appointment or it's a role play appointment. I don't care if it's going to your kid's um, sport, whatever, whatever sport they're playing, a game or a practice. I, I don't care if it's to get your hair cut. I don't care if it's to take the afternoon off and go wherever you're going to go. I, I don't care if it's a vacation. I don't care if it's a massage. I, 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 I don't care if you just want to sit and watch Netflix if, if you're hitting your goals. Like, don't do that all day. You won't hit your goals if you do that. Like, whatever it is, like, it's an appointment. So, so, so just learn that, that it's an appointment. And, and then I'm going to give you one third thing that will help you stick to your time block. And like I said, some of you might be thinking that we're doing this out of order. Like, no, I'd rather talk about how to time block successfully later. If you're never going to stick to it, then it doesn't matter that we talk to it, right? So, so here's the third thing that you can do in order to stick to your time block. Set expectations. Like in all areas of your life, definitely within your business. So for instance, if you call me and I don't answer, which there's a great chance that I won't answer right when you call, I will always get back to you. I'm actually very timely about getting back to people. And yet I won't probably answer. You'll get my voicemail. And if you actually listen to it, as not everybody does anymore, that's okay. Um, you'll hear that I tell them that, you know, hey, you know, if this is after six o'clock, I will call you on the next business day. I've never had anybody leave me a message that's like, how dare you? Nobody cares. It's not a big deal, right? So, so you can do things like that. When I met with a new seller or a new buyer, 
outside of the regular contract, I had my own paperwork for my team and we still do. I'm just not the one going on the appointments anymore. And business hours are discussed in there. So we tell our sellers and our buyers right up front when we're available and when we're not available. And as we're explaining it, it's all in the delivery. So as we're explaining it, we make sure that they know when we say that we don't work past 6 p.m. And, you know, just so you know, by the way, like there's not a whole lot that, a lot that happens after 6 p.m. There's not really any emergencies in real estate, especially in the evening. We deal with things during the day. So it'll be OK. And look, do I flex here and there? If I've got somebody who's important to me and, and and they work late and they can only get into a house on this one day and this is the house that they need to see and it's in, like, I'm not saying that you can never deviate from the way that you set up your day. And yet if you don't set up your day and set boundaries, then you're living in deviation and you have no consistency to your life. Right. So so if we're going to be time blocking machines and if your goal is to succeed in 2023, and I'm certain that you wouldn't be watching this if it wasn't. So if that's your goal, then then you going to you get to be an amazing time blocker. Oh, I don't know. Like we'll get to that. We'll help you do it. And yet if you're going to be a time blocker, you're going to have to sit, stick to your time block. Right. So reminder, we do not need to be controlled by this. You know, I. I'm going to go back here for a second and tell you a story because it was a bold coach. It was probably my 10th or 11th bold. And I took 15 of them before I became a coach. So it was pretty far along. And and I'm human just like everybody else. And I don't think I was a horrible human. And there's a lot of ego at that point. I was one of the top producers in the area. I was a top producer in the room of this particular bold. I had never taken bold with this bold coach before. And I was just over there like my, you know what, didn't stink, right? Like, and I was just on my phone the entire class. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay, back to my phone. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. Oh, back to my phone, which for the record serves no one. And, and that, and I had never been called out on it before. And that coach came up to me and she looked me in the eye and said, what other areas of your life are you not present in that, that, that may be affecting you negatively? Now, in the moment, I was like, how dare you call me out in front of the room? Ego. Well, she caused me to think a lot the rest of that day. She also got me to put this thing down for the rest of the day. And, and it just, it, it changed the way that I look at things. Now, here's what I've realized since then. I'm not that powerful, right? Like, so when I'm in lead gen mode in the morning and, and I've got somebody calling me because the appraisal was low or the realtor left the house unlocked or whatever, right? Like whatever issue we're dealing with, or there's a counter on an offer or whatever it is. Like I just had to learn that some deals close and some deals don't. And I don't really have a lot of control over that. Yes, there's things that I can do, that my assistant can do, that my team can do, the title can do, that the lender, like there's things we can do to nudge things along. And yet some deals just won't close. And what I had to learn was that me taking the call about the low appraisal at 10.15 versus at 1230 had no impact on whether it was going to work out or not. And when I stopped jumping on problems the minute they arose, I found that a lot of them had worked themselves out by the time I got to them. So a lot of us, including myself for many years, thought if I'm just available all the time and I jump on every issue all the time and I show every house the minute they ask to show it, that I'll be the best agent ever. And, and, and what I had to learn was that I was actually causing more problems that way. I was making mountains out of molehills and, and I was just leading by ego, even though in my head, I thought I was being helpful. Really, I was just acting like I was Superman and I could fix everything. And, and I know now that I can't. What I can control though, is how many people I talk to every day to make sure that if one, two, three Main Street, that contract falls apart, that I've already got a replacement and I don't have to freak out about it. So, so, so don't let yourself be controlled by this. Don't convince yourself that you must be available all the time and you must react the minute things happen. That's not how it has to be. It is okay. I prompt, let me give you permission if no one else ever has, right? So we're not going to do that anymore. We're, we're going to learn that everything is an appointment. We're not going to shortchange our lives for other people. Oh, well, it's just that dinner with that friend I haven't seen in forever. I guess I can cancel. No, we're not going to do that. I have an appointment. And yet I could meet tomorrow morning at 10 or in the afternoon at three, which one's better for you? Right? We're going to have appointments. 
We're going to not be controlled by this. We're going to learn to be time blocking machines so that we can live a life that most people simply just dream of living. So I trust that you got some value out of this. We're going to talk next time about the basics of time blocking and quite frankly, why so many people fail of it outside of all the distraction things that we talked about, because it's not just that. There's an art to the time block, and most people assume it's the opposite of what the art is. So we're going to have an amazing week. I'm going to see you next week. You'll get your video on Monday next week since it's no longer all these holidays and travel and all the craziness. And I trust that you'll be purposeful. All right. Take care. Can't wait to see you.